What is up, Solcon and Gaborum? Randall Ballou here, co-captain of Solcon Young Warrior and Young Gaborum, and also a part of the Solcon teaching team. So, hey, I just want to start off. As you can probably tell, I am not in the official Solcon teaching team attire, so uh, I ask for your forgiveness. I do have the word and a cup of coffee, and so I just ask that you... Uh, Give me a little bit of grace uh, as we journey through uh, this Thursday teaching today. I, I want to share with you something uh, that God's doing in my life and just a word that I feel like he has put on my heart. Uh, about two and a half years ago, God started working in my heart and in my wife's heart and really kind of impressed it on us that it was time for us to make a move. Uh, it was time for us to to change location. It was time for us to pursue uh, another calling and something else that God had in store. And if you know me, uh, that doesn't really bother me much. Uh, I am I'm pretty uh, pretty apt to go wherever. But for my wife, that was a challenge because it involved us leaving the uh, place where she was born and raised. And so, what I want to talk to you about this morning or or this afternoon, whenever you're watching this, is is the, the concept of transitions and just some things I think we can take away uh, from the Word of God and some things that we can apply to our lives to help us as we navigate uh, transitions. And so I just want to define real quick, and this is, this is not a technical definition. This is not anything that is official. This is, this is my definition, so I, I pray that you receive it uh, as so. But just a transition. What does a transition consist of? What is a transition in the life of a Christian? I think a transition could be anything from a career change to a calling change. Maybe it's a, an addition of a child, uh, an addition of a, a, a bride, a groom. Uh, you know, for our wives, they, they, they go through a transition when they have to live with us. Maybe you're moving from house to house. Uh, maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it is a, an intense diagnosis that you're not prepared for. Uh, maybe it's just a daily transition of you, you got a new neighbor or, you know, they switched up the office at work or they, they blocked off a road that you can't go down. And, and, and my point is, in, in all these things, we have big transitions and little transitions and we have little things and big things in life that change day to day, hour by hour, sometimes minute by minute. And I just want to encourage you and challenge you that as a Christ follower, when transitions occur, I really want to encourage you to, to try and see the blessing, even if those transitions may be challenging. And then I want to encourage you with your response. I'm reminded of the story of Abraham. This is I've shared this before, but this is my favorite passage and favorite response uh, from from an individual to God in all of Scripture, and it reads like this in Abraham, or sorry, in Genesis chapter twelve, God speaks to Abraham, and and mind you, we're in the middle of a move. I'm reading out of my son's uh, play playbook for Champions Bible that we got uh, at basketball camp. My phone is posted up on a cereal box, so I'm in a transition as we speak. So uh, bear with me here. Chapter twelve, the Lord said to Abram. Go from your country, your people, your father's household, to the land I will show you. God gives him a command. In the next two verses, he gives him a promise. But what I want to focus on is verse 4. We see his response. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and his family went with him. And so I read this and I think to myself, is it really that simple? Are transitions in life really that simple? And I think they are. I think we overcomplicate things. God calls us to go. God calls us to do something or something changes. Our response should always be to do what God has told us to do. Here's what I want to challenge you with. Maybe there is a transition in your life. Maybe something has changed. That doesn't change what God has called you to do when that means live for him. Now, different parts of that may change, different styles, different people, different things. 
But God is still calling you to lead, lead and live a selfless life where you place others before yourself. You know, one thing as we're moving, we've been moving houses the past week and it's been chaotic. And, and, and my wife was starting to get extremely irritable and, and I was too. And we're, 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 we're exhausted, we're tired. Uh, we're just, we've got a lot to do and not a lot of time. And her nanny was here working in the kitchen yesterday, which her nanny's about 80, 82 years old, I believe. Sweet, sweet lady. And she comes into the living room. She looks at both of us and she says, be still. Be still. We take a deep breath and we look at each other. You know, this is, this is okay. We're tired. We're frustrated. But we're trusting God because this is the right move. She didn't say, hey, just quit or don't worry about this. She said, be still. And then she quoted Psalm and she said, be still and know that he is God. And even in the chaos of moving house to house, I think that verse can apply to a lot of areas in our life. When we experience a transition, I think the best thing for the believer to do is respond like Abraham. And when chaos happens, be still and trust. We're going to calm our spirits, but we're not going to stop moving our feet. I want you to understand that you calm your spirit, you calm your desires, you calm your wants, but you never stop walking and moving towards God. You calm that anxiety, you calm that stress and you you still and you say, OK, God, you're calling us. We're going. You you called us two years ago to a different church, to a different job, to a different position. OK, God, we're going to be still. We're going to put our desires on pause. And we're going to put our desires on hold and we're going to move towards you. Abraham was still before God. You see, having a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, it's funny to me because when I want them to listen to me, I have to sit them down and get them still. As a Christ follower, if your heart is not still before the Lord, you're not going to be able to listen to him tell you to go. And your response probably isn't going to be what it needs to be. And so I'm just, man, just thinking about transitions in life, whatever it may be, a bad diagnosis, a loss of a loved one. Maybe it's a good transition. But there's two things I want to encourage you. I want you, I want you to be still. But I want you to be still, and that doesn't mean you stop moving. Being still doesn't mean you stop pursuing God. Being still is not an excuse to do nothing. Being still means you're willing to calm your desires in your mind so you can get in tune and in line with the mind and desires of God. How beautiful would it be if, if we read this passage? And I'm just going to do this, and I want you to hear this. The Lord said to Randall, Go from your town, from your people, from the place that you've always known, and I'm going to do a great work with you. So Randall went as the Lord had told him. Can you place your name in that passage? Sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can. But transitions test our faithfulness. You want to you wanna have a, a test of your faith? Go through a transition. Be still and know that he is God, but never stop moving toward him. I love you guys. I hope this is encouraging to you. And I, I, I hope that if you're experiencing something in life, whether it's a challenge, whether it's a, a good thing, a bad thing, a transition, I just pray that you trust in him. You trust in him and you learn to smile and you learn to take a deep breath. And you, and you know, hey, his plan is greater than ours. And when he calls, Men of God, they go. They don't sit around and goof off. They don't, oh, I don't know if I should do this. They calm their spirit. They're still before God. They're listening to his word. And when he says go, we go. Love you guys.